There we go. Our lioness is moving off once again into the long grasses. Uh, earlier on, this lioness stood up and looked quite intently in the direction that she's moving in, which makes me wonder whether or not it's she can't actually see something that I can't. I'm thinking along the lines of a warthog. You never know. The rest of the pride, or at least her, the other two adult females, are just on the other side of this bush over here. So she might just be going off in search of them. Going to go and find a nice spot to lie in the sun and warm up after a cool evening. I think, though, she's seen something and that she's just going to play the patience game in case it comes in her direction. Whoop. Awesome. Fantastic view of our lionesses. I suspect that all of the cubs are playing down in this drainage line at the bottom. Right, well, what else can we see? There's a herd of elephants off in the distance. I think we'll make our way towards them in a little bit. There they are over there. Now, the plan for this morning, if you know how plans go out here, but the plan for this morning is to take you back towards that leopard that Brent had yesterday. So there we go. There are the elephants at the base of the Ololo mountain escarpment. And then at the top of that sits the fantastic Angama Lodge. Angama sitting up at the top right next to our camp. They, of course, have been really truly instrumental in setting us up on the side of Africa. And just have a look there. There's the lodge. And just imagine what the view is like from up top there. I don't think I need to describe it. I think you can imagine it. The open plains. Imagine watching sunrise from your room at the top of this mountain. Oh, Michael, last night when we were sitting with the lionesses, they roared pretty much all the way through the evening. And you were wondering if the lions of the Mara roar more frequently than the lions in the sands. I don't think I'd say that, no. Look, I mean, it depends. It's circumstantial when lionesses roar. We haven't heard the Inkuhumas roar, or at least we hadn't when I left, roar all that frequently because I think that they were feeling a little bit unsettled for whatever reason, whether it was to do with the area they were in or something happening with other prides, but they were quite quiet. But a year before that, the Inkuhumas were roaring all the time. And the lion prides that we've seen here do seem to roar pretty much every half an hour or so at certain times of the evening, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's more frequent. I have noticed, well, I mean, there is this, the possibility that because there's a higher concentration of lions, they might be more inclined to be very defensive of their territory, but it's hard to say, and I don't think we've been here for long enough to really make a comparison because it's so circumstantial and so dependent upon where exactly you happen to be and what exactly happens to be happening with the lions around you. And there's two people coming to see, or two vehicles coming to see the lions. They're going to be sorely disappointed because I'm going to have to just quickly chat to them and let them know they're gone. Now, Nina, you would like to know how do lions stalk a such fast antelope? The answer to that lies in the long grass. They've got plenty of cover in order to creep up on an antelope so they can sneak their way through and use that amazing camouflage and in fact become far more reliant on that golden color of theirs to hide them in the grasses. Abari! Where that, but they've below the bush. A Kichwe, that side, but they've below the bushes. So useful. You saw that yesterday, or you, you um, James might have described it yesterday with the wildebeest hunt that he witnessed, and the fact that they can coordinate, and one lioness can chase a very fast antelope, and she might not be able to catch it, but at the same time, another lioness could come around and actually cut it off, and that's where the coordination of their hunts is so very important. I'm going to move because I can't see any lions. Ashes, you want to know why lions have a black tip on the end of their tail. Well, there we go. That, that sort of s ties in nicely with what we were talking about in terms of their coordinated hunting. The fact that they have to coordinate in some way and they can't do it vocally, 
because that would completely ruin the hunt, it would completely ruin the surprise. So what they do is they communicate visually with each other, with flicks of their tail and flicks of their ears, that's why they have the black on the back of their ears as well. And black is a color that stands out very, very noticeably out here, where in a world of basically browns and greens, black stands out very clearly. So by highlighting the backs of the ears and the tail, they can coordinate their hunts. And I think the more hunts that we see out here, the more we're going to actually see that work, actually be able to see how that works. Because we've got the open space, it's a lot easier for us to follow the animals as they hunt. So you'll be able to see exactly how they coordinate what they're doing. I suspect that that's it for the lions for today. You never know though out here, it doesn't get too hot, so the, the lions are always active. Right, I'm going to go off in a search of some elephants and a leopard while we do that. Let's go across to Byron, it seems as though it's zebra day on Juma.